Welcome, and thanks for joining us at the Grown Ups Table. I'm Dave Patterson. And I'm Dylan DeQuano. This is the podcast where we talk to you about the shit you never learned, but you probably should have. That your fancy yuppie wedding voice, Dylan? No, I feel like I've been doing that every time. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe it is my... I'm, I'm supposed to be a, um, a wedding MC. I was supposed oh, to be. that's right. I ago. forgot about that. Yeah, but that uh, obviously was put on hold and still hasn't come to fruition yet. So uh, you got to practice when you can. Well, you might be able to get some pointers today from our guest, Katie McLean, who will be joining us in a little while to discuss how to be a good wedding guest or nice how to at least not be an asshole. Yeah. Well, I mean, for most people, I feel like you spend your whole life, like maybe you go to a couple of like your cousin's weddings or family weddings or friends of parents or something like that. Then all of a sudden, one day you're 20 years old and your friend who's also 21 years old tells you they're getting married and they're, you're like, whoa, people my age are getting married. That's crazy. I've never been a real wedding guest. I've just been like with my parents and tagged along. I don't know what to do. What am I supposed to do here? And you're just into this world of like, I don't know what the right thing to do. How do I be a wedding guest? No one ever tells you how to do it. So that's what we're going to try to do today. Yeah. And I know I personally grew up in a small family and I'm at the older end of my cousin. So there were no real family weddings growing up to even kind of get a sense of things. I don't think I went to a wedding until like that i remember i know i went to my aunt's wedding when i was like three years old but other than that i'm pretty sure i didn't go to a wedding until i was like 16 or 17 yeah it was like the first time i went to and it was like my mom's cousin's wedding and uh did you get sauced well it was a jewish (laughs) wedding and that is a great first wedding to go to oh absolutely have you been to one? I've just seen it on TV and I'm like, that looks like a banger. And it's exactly like it is on TV. At least the one I went to. I'm sure not everyone is the exact same, but the one I went to, they're singing all the songs, crushing the glass with their feet, lifting them up in the air with chairs, a rabbi dancing in the middle of a circle. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would highly recommend if you get the, if you get the invite, accept RSVP plus four. Actually, maybe that's a bad idea. <laughs> well, um, as we always ask kind of at the beginning here, is there anything you've been working on lately, Dave? Yeah, I've been working, uh, mixing up my workout routine, started getting bored, <laughs> had a solid, solid routine of like, you know, knowing what I was going to do every day. And with the exception of a handful of times, I was pretty good with it for most of this last year, but I, uh, I'm starting to run out of motivation to do the same shit in my basement day after day. So Mm -hmm. just adding some little wrinkles into the plan, mix it up a bit. So what's your normal routine look like? Well, I have my daily stuff. Like I walk the dog a lot, like, you know, your morning push-ups and all that dumb shit. Then I add usually Mondays, I hit the bike. Tuesdays, I do legs. Wednesdays, I take off and just kind of do a good stretch. Thursdays arms and shoulders Fridays I do chest and back and then weekends I'm usually playing some sport or doing something but that hasn't been happening since COVID so that's where I've been trying to add some more fun shit in nice you got quite a regimen there my mine is usually the bike with a the hockey game on and then the bike with the hockey game on. And it's really hard when there's a gap in hockey games and then <laughs> there's, you can't ride the bike. There's no, yeah. there's no other way about it. You're just fully on the NHL schedule. You get an all-star break. You get, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, for me, um, something I've been working on, well, the other day. So like three years ago, maybe even longer, I bought this leather tooling kit and it just has... I think I've helped you move that into multiple houses. Probably thrice, yes. Have you opened it yet? <laughs> I did. I opened it when I first bought it and I opened <laughs> it again last night for the first time in years and I started designing a little wall. I actually have the first thing I made right here beside me. It's a little coaster that I like... Oh, like that looks awesome. Kind of make believe. It's got a little bit of like a, a water stain on it. Yeah. 
We should oh, continue to discuss it? visual things while recording audio. Only. Yeah. I think our listeners are really going to appreciate the texture of that coaster. Uh, you guys are missing out. We will eventually probably put this into a video podcast one day. Who knows? But if we do, then that'll be a m- much more interesting topic. But yeah, I, I whipped out the leather making kit last night. I was bored. Um, Emily was doing crafts. We have a craft room slash my office. Like it's one eighth my office, seven eighths her crafts. <laughs> so she was in there last night and i was like i'm bored what should i do and she's like why don't you pull out the leather making kit and work on something on that so i uh, pulled out the wallet design which is just basically a blank wallet pockets and some bill fold type things so i didn't make the whole thing but i just etched out like my design on it it's really goofy it's not good it's way worse than this one i did before because i uh I'm not an artist at all. <laughs> Got to start but, somewhere. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's just something to do. So that's that's what I've been working on. Nothing special, but finally broke out that thing that I spent like a hundred bucks on, and now I've used twice. <laughs> I think we should make some predictions here. Like by the time we do our first episode, that's in video and audio formats. What leather creation are you going to be able to show off? The thing is, the kit that I bought only comes with a couple of items it's not just like sheets of leather let's buy a cow yeah i was thinking that and then you can use all the parts right you can you can make your stakes and your (laughs) your belt yeah stakes and and belts that's about it yeah and you can keep the the head for your mantle right (laughs) (laughs) so (laughs) Sorry, vegetarians and vegans out there. You're probably cursing us right now. Um, I just love the idea of just a cow's head on your mantle. (laughs) Not even like the skull, just the full head, stinky, (laughs) not washed. Oh, you're not even like, not, we're not even talking proper taxidermy. We're just like, (laughs) just put it there, gluing it to a board, and up it goes. I wasn't even thinking super glue. (laughs) Just. Well, this is just some Lord of the Flies shit now. <laughs> yeah, this is probably going to get me arrested or something, so we should stop talking about that. <laughs> well, um, good stuff. I'm glad you're uh, changing up the workout routine. Keep it fresh. Yeah, man. You got it. It gets brutal. All right. So what um, are you looking to get from this episode? What are some things? Oh, we've all been to more weddings now. I've been married. Yeah, um, I have not. So I've got an idea of what I expected of guests at my wedding to an extent, but I still, every time I'm going to a wedding, like, I don't know all of the rules. I'm just hoping to not find out that I fucked up horribly in the past. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I'm less like excited to ask questions and more nervous that I'm going to uncover some serious mistake I've made. All of your questions are going to start with... So I have this friend yeah. who so he, buddy. he went to this wedding one time. <laughs> uh, yeah, what happens if you pass out at a wedding? I I don't know. I don't, I don't think there's a real uh, go to list for that. It probably depends on the circumstances. Yeah, I don't think there's like an automatic response. No, Katie might be like every time. No, if someone passes out, there's someone is supposed to stand up on a chair, clap three times, backflip off of it, and that's that's the protocol. I don't think that she's going to say. Why that. do we even need the expert here today? Well, you're talking to two experts right now, <laughs> not you, the, the people listening who are talking back to us. <laughs> Oh, we are not smart people. No, we have our moments. <laughs> Any Anything that you've ever done at a wedding that you are on the borderline of, was that proper wedding etiquette or was that something I shouldn't have done? I don't think so. No, usually at a wedding, I'm the guy by the bar finding some random dudes who want to talk about baseball. <laughs> Oh, that's another good question. Just about being at a wedding, should the should a sports game be on at the bar? See, I don't know if I've ever seen that, but that's on the people planning, not on the people there. That's true. Like Can if you I go to a wedding it? and it's oh oh, that is something <laughs> I might do. 
All right. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> not entirely out of the realm of things Dave would do. What if the wedding is booked and it's the World Series game, game seven? You oh, can't not, not expect it to be on. Yeah, hundred percent. What if you have to? What if it's your brother's wedding? What if you're in? What if you're the best man? First of all, my brother would understand. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think if the people who's if the the wedding couple is cool with it, then fuck it, have the game on. Yeah, yeah. Why I think not? if you ask, if you ask, that that's a good thing though. Go ask the groom. <laughs> Wait, I, I shouldn't like text the bride the morning of the wedding saying, Hey, just so I know what I need to bring, will the Jays game be on? That is a good point that I'm going to add in here. Texting the. Should you text the people getting married on their wedding day? And I'm going to say, unless you're not invited and you're just sending well wishes, no. Yeah. I think that's fair, but we'll verify that with Katie. Don't you dare send a text message asking what time you should be there, asking (laughs) where you should park, asking any details that are on the invitation or that you can just figure out because you're an adult human being. If you have questions about any of those things, you should stay tuned for the following interview. (laughs) All right. Well, we got our uh, our guest here, Katie McLean, on the show with us. How are you doing, Katie? I'm good. How are you? I'm pretty good. We went to university with Katie way back in the day at old uh, Wilfrid Laurier University in Waterloo. <laughs> and uh, it's been a while since we've seen you. So what have you been up to since university? Yeah, I've been up to a lot. Um, I, currently, I'm trying to navigate how to help people have a wedding in a pandemic. Um, <laughs> that is quite interesting because, uh, it's like planning a wedding every week because you have to change everything. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I can't even think past 2020. <laughs> I can't believe there were four years before that. Um, but yeah, I guess just keeping really busy. <laughs> I was thinking that the other day, like post university and pre pandemic, that time window has just blurred for me. Yeah. Oh, completely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So why don't you tell us a bit more about what kind of work and experience you've had within the wedding industry? Mm-hmm, sure. Um, so I actually first started planning weddings in my first year of university. Um, I had like a crew of friends who were like six or seven years older than me, and they all got engaged in the same year. Um, wow. And <laughs> yeah, it was... <laughs> crazy and they all landed their first like full-time jobs at the same time um so they were like I have no time or money (laughs) to plan a wedding so they were in a bit of like a panic state so um I was like oh I love Pinterest I'll help (laughs) so basically I was planning people's weddings out of my dorm room um (laughs) at Laurier and I kind of somehow kind of made a name for myself as like the wedding girl um but yeah so that's how it started and then once you start doing people's weddings uh people pull you aside really strangely at (laughs) what they say hey like mostly like women saying like hey he hasn't proposed yet but he's going to Um, they're not even engaged yet and they're scouting most people are not engaged they're like hey um you see that guy over there yeah he's gonna (laughs) propose soon i think (laughs) Um, and so like, do you do this? Can I, can you like, can I hire you? So it basically like was a bit of a wedding business that never was a wedding business because people just kept asking me to help. And, um, yeah, so it kind of grew from there. And, um, from there, I actually worked for a wedding magazine in Toronto, um, the wedding planner magazine. So after university, I was their blogger and writer. So I would go to like industry events and um, yeah, anything, cakes, dresses, suit companies, I've been to all of them. And wow. uh, yeah, like different uh, fashion shows, things like that. And I would just write about different companies. So I've had um, my hand in lots of things. I've done some floristry (laughs) I've done (laughs) wedding shows wedding show season's crazy you go to like uh there's like probably like 10 in the GTA wedding shows 
Um, so that's a whole new ball game. It's just like, yeah, that's its own craziness. So yeah, I, I feel like uh, I'm well versed in weddings now, but and now weddings in a pandemic, like you said. Yeah. 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 Weddings in a pandemic. I thought weddings were hard before, but um, <laughs> no. <laughs> poor, poor couples. All constantly shifting goalposts don't make it easier. Yeah. I know one couple and they had to change their venue nine times. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Yeah. So um, every week there was new restrictions announced and we would have a Sunday meeting about what that meant for the wedding and then we would change it accordingly. So it's a lot of creativity, but no kidding. I'm impressed how people make it happen no matter what. So yeah. Now, now are you the, the person like, are you there on the wedding day? Mostly like person helping with the clipboard. Yeah, oh, the person yeah. Okay, so I say like I feel like there's two roles. There's wedding planner and wedding coordinator. Yeah. Um. So you can be hired as both. If you're a wedding planner, you're most likely the coordinator as well, or you have someone under you who is the coordinator on the day. Um. But wedding coordination is more so just like the day of or the week of, mm-hmm. um, just like doing the rehearsal and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm I definitely do that. Um. I fluff the bride's dress at the end of the aisle. I do all the. <laughs> Um, like the, all the things that you'd expect someone to run around frantically and keep people apart and (laughs) keep uh, family members happy. And yeah, so I've done lots of that, but then also on the flip side, just doing more like visionary stuff. Like, what do you want the day to look like? Mm -hmm. Um, what's your budget? How are you going to keep to it? (laughs) Yeah. Well, um, and that's kind of where I wanted to, to just jump in and say what, like the main focus of this, because every person's wedding is different Mm -hmm. and we could probably talk for hours on different ways. You could go about doing a wedding, basically have a big free wedding session. That's a whole series of episodes. There's probably an entire (laughs) podcast. We can't do that one day. (laughs) (laughs) But instead what we want to talk about and what we're kind of focusing on this podcast is the things that you never learned. And being a wedding guest is one of those things that Mm -hmm. you never actually get told how to do. And there's lots of like etiquette things that maybe people don't know. There's lots of maybe just faux pas or like old fashioned things that like people don't follow or they do follow uh, and we just kind of want to deep like dive into some of that stuff with you today totally, yeah but before we get going too far what are we drinking tonight katie oh we're drinking mimosas that is a very wedding themed <laughs> drink and i love it i'm gonna pour mine now i thought this is the only way to go this is the only way to go <laughs> when you're um talking about weddings oh wow look at the pour yeah I got I got the uh, Henkel Rosé, which was already in the fridge for my Ooh. wife. <laughs> yeah, as somebody who's not married, I did not have a rosé sitting in my fridge. Right. Okay. <laughs> Quick little LCBO trip, but um, and the, the president's was... choice with pulp, one hundred percent. Oh, a oh, with pulp. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a pulp guy. What can I say? I'm a pulp guy. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, in a mimosa though. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't. Th- I thought more about how it's going to sit with the rest of my breakfast this week than That's fair. right now. Oh yeah, this is looking that funny. Is <laughs> this is looking- it's going to be a tall pour. Hey, it's a part of a balanced breakfast, Don. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, cheers, folks. Cheers. cheers, guys. Cheers. And another thing, right before we get way deep into the episode, which mm-hmm. we ask all of our guests is uh, what you've been streaming lately on Netflix or Disney Plus or Amazon Prime or YouTube or whatever you like to watch things. Okay. My friends and I have recently gotten obsessed with The Circle. Have you heard of this show? Oh, I feel like I saw a trailer for it, but I haven't actually watched it. Yeah. So it came out last year, but the season two just came out and they released four episodes every Wednesday night on Netflix. Um, So basically it's like it's kind of like a social experiment, but um, there's like a hotel and there's like eight different rooms, I think, in the hotel. And the people in the hotel only communicate through social media. So they can either catfish or they can be themselves. And you have to be the most popular to win and you win like a cash prize or something. So it's just like the craziest thing. Like they have, um, you just have to like 
there's challenges and like they all live in these little apartments that are like designed to look like what it should look like if you were the, the person that you're being so like there's like an old guy and he's pretending to be this like young like hippie dude so he's in this like apartment that's like all decked out for that um but it's so it is so interesting because like there'll be guys pretending to be like their wives on this thing and they like oh, start shit. girl chats and then they're like trying to talk with the girls <laughs> it's like so good so that's cool yeah. i have to check that one out i think i saw a yeah. uh yeah, like a little just screen grab thing for it the other day. And I was like, that looks like nothing I've ever seen before. But yeah. that was cool. Yeah. That sounds like exactly. hyper millennial. <laughs> oh, totally. And it's like, it's definitely, uh, yeah, it's definitely a 2021 show. <laughs> but <laughs> it's fun to chat. It's a good uh, one to watch with people and talk about. So nice. That's great. Yeah. All righty. All right. Well, maybe a good one to start. Before you even, you know, get to the wedding day as a guest, at some point you're going to get an invitation in the mail. And mm -hmm. worst case scenario, you can't attend or maybe you don't want to attend or maybe there's some serious drama between you and the bride or something. I don't know. Yeah. But when and how is it okay to decline a wedding invitation? Should that be done in person? What's kind of like the general etiquette? No, I don't think it needs to be done in person. It's really, it's a little bit difficult these days because a lot of wedding invites are being done online now. Mm. So I feel like the way that it was given to you is the way that you should like respond. That so, makes sense. Yeah. Um, so like if you got it in an email, it's fine to send an email back. Like if you got it in like a letter, like it says on it, like you have to check if you're coming or not. So do actually send that back. But you could also send like a follow-up message being like, hi, so sorry. I can't come, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I think also like, it also depends how close you are to the person. Yeah, for sure. If, if they're a close friend, then I think it would be strange <laughs> for you to just send them a message and then <laughs> no more talk about it again. <laughs> um, but if it's like, I, I don't know, those, those invitations where it's like, oh, it's my cousin's friend that I met once and they're having a wedding of 400, like, yeah. But I think to be honest, because of how expensive weddings are, I don't think people are deeply like <laughs> troubled when you say no. That's very true. So honestly, like a lot of brides, they invite like, okay, here's just like a ballpark, but like they invite 150 and they're hoping only 100 come. Um, So you're just one of those <laughs> numbers. <laughs> Someone has in to a, be. In a loving, loving, loving way, but... <laughs> It's it's true. For the people getting married a lot of the time, it's really like the venue holds 160 people right. and there's 170 people that I want to invite. So these are the 160 initial invitations I'm going to send. And if 10 people say no, then I can invite those other 10 people. Exactly. Yeah. So, so. I would say don't be afraid unless it's your brother or like right. – <laughs> Like someone yeah. very close in your life who you probably like <laughs> should be at that yeah. wedding. If it's just a, a distant cousin or a friend who you like yeah. that you can't make it, you can't make it and they'll, they'll understand. But I think the most important thing to do is if you know you can't make it, say it right away. Because just like you said, um, there's there's usually a, like a, a B list <laughs> for the wedding. <laughs> and um, those people don't know that the invites have gone out or whatever, but like – it, it, it would be nice for them to invite those people. So it's it's for best sure. to just do it right away because you get sent invites so early for weddings um, that if you do a quick turnaround, it helps them with numbers and planning and everything. So what one other thing I'm going to put in terms of RSVPing to a wedding mm -hmm. is if you RSVP, yes, don't on the day of text them saying, mm -hmm. Sorry, I can't make it because they already paid 160 bucks maybe for your plate of food. Right. That's just going to go to waste now. Right. So, uh, just just to keep yeah. that in mind, listeners out there, if you've ever yeah, done that oh to me, or... <laughs> yeah, I think like I think that's a good point because a lot of people, I think you just think of it as like a birthday party where like you're you've invited like I don't know like a group of friends over to have some drinks and pizza. It is not the same <laughs> like you can't just they can't just fill someone in the day of like you don't just call someone and say hi you're now a guest I mean sometimes <laughs> people do but like um yeah like there's so much thought into like name tags and like 
Oh gosh, just like like a, a printed seating chart, like that says oh, all the tables everyone's going to sit at. Like yeah, there's so many fine details. Too. Exactly. So you doing that is like, yeah, that is a huge slap in the face. So. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So it wasn't the main point of Dylan's question, but it kind of brings up another question we wanted to ask, which is, is there any reason to text people on the day of their wedding? Oh, um, no. <laughs> 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 well, it depends who you are. Like, I mean, as a wedding planner, I feel bad texting people on the day of their wedding. And I'm like one of the only people who should be. <laughs> um, because if you're not with them, then you shouldn't need to talk to them like they're already frantic (laughs) as it is um so yeah I think honestly a lot of the time they don't even have their phone on them so they wouldn't be responding to you yeah yeah I I turned my phone off on my wedding day like pretty much the moment that we left my house I took one picture that night it was with (laughs) Dave (laughs) that's the only picture I took on my phone on the wedding (laughs) is a selfie of me and Dave (laughs) I love that yeah. So, I mean, like, honestly, for me, I usually choose a pinpoint person who's like, in the bridal party to text with. So I don't even speak to the bride the day of. Like, if it wasn't figured out three days before the wedding, it's going to be fine. I'll just make a decision um, as the planner. But like, as a guest, I don't know what you would need <laughs> to be texting them about. Like, it's so thorough. Like, you got an invitation, you get an email, it tells you directions. When you show up, there's people showing you where to go. Like, you, it's kind of like foolproof. <laughs> so um, just wait to see them. And if you have something to tell them, maybe text them another time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they probably have other things going on. Yeah. Just a couple. Yeah, exactly. All right. So let's say you are going to your first wedding and you've never, like maybe you've gone with your parents to a cousin's wedding or something like that before, but this is your friend's wedding. Your first parents are wedding. Yeah. <laughs> you're going by yourself or with your plus one or your group of friends from university or whatever. Mm-hmm. What is the way to go about deciding what kind of gift you're going to get the bride and groom is there a price is a gift card okay is it cash okay what would you say yeah great question um i i feel like i've been talking about this one more recently with um people because i think for females before the wedding day we've already been to like eight events in regards to that (laughs) wedding and so um there's a registry usually that you have at bridal showers and such. And so that's something that um, a lot of people will have already bought. Um, couples sometimes have to go twice and redo the <laughs> registry because people have bought all the gifts that they put on it. So um, people do show up to weddings with like an actual gift, but then like their family or someone in the wedding party is going to have to package all of those <laughs> gifts up the day of. So it's not necessarily the kindest thing to do. Um <laughs> But if it happens, that's okay. Um, But I think the general rule is that you pay for your meal. Um, What they say generally is that a gift per person of like $100 to $200 is to like cover the plate, depending on what kind of wedding you're going to. I think you'll kind of know. (laughs) Like if you're going to like a farmyard wedding where it's more of like a picnic style or like food trucks or stuff like that you maybe don't need to drop three hundred dollars um as a wedding gift but if it's like a black tie event you're probably going on the higher end of things so i think honestly the most helpful thing is cash because then they can cover the things um that they didn't yet receive or pay for the wedding or pay for the honeymoon. Right, exactly. But if they have had a registry, um, getting a gift card for those places is also awesome because that those are the places they're going to fit their house with that stuff. And for registry stuff, the things that they have not gotten from guests, they can get at a discounted price on the registry. So that's really helpful. So cash or gift cards. But I think just choosing a random place to get someone a gift card, maybe not your best move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like maybe not on the way to the wedding, you stop at the yeah. gas station and look at their selection of four gift cards and get them a Petro Canada card. Like, <laughs> oh, I was going to go the Swiss Chalet Harvey's combo. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing says romance like Swiss Chalet. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> but yeah, like I would say if you're if you're like really in a crunch, uh, get a Visa gift card. <laughs> right. <laughs> I have a question, a more personal question, not to me specifically, to my sister, who specifically okay. asked me to ask about this. Okay. It's a summer wedding. Mm -hmm. It's hot. It's like 35 degrees. It's, everyone's wearing their sundresses. And you want to wear a big hat on your head. Is that okay? Um, honestly, that's traditional. So I would say yes. Okay. Um. Yeah, I, I, I think maybe um, because I'm British, I have a bit of a inkling to this because that is very British to do. Um, yeah. My sister got married in England and I was like, oh my, all the women have hats on. This is crazy. Um, <laughs> but I think you dress to the weather. And so if you're in a Canadian summer, like on one of the hottest days, go for it. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta protect that skin. Yeah, I would maybe a ball cap i wouldn't rock a ball cap at a wedding that's fair <laughs> yeah i would say keep it classy but like i have hats that i i would wear to a wedding um just make sure that your hat is equal to the like dressiness of your outfit that's but, true i don't personally think i own a hat that is wearable to a wedding right if i did maybe i'd wear it but yeah I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah um know your own closet maybe is the rule there but I, yeah, know your closet and also a pocket fan goes a long way. So get one of those little spinny ones. It'll and save how, how many opportunities do you get to pull out the pocket fan? Oh, yeah, all the time. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> if you're Katie all the time. <laughs> I mean, you could use it at your office. Um, but no, I think honestly, Canada can be really hot and people who have outdoor weddings, you can be sweltering. So anything that makes you feel comfortable at those, um, as long as you're not upstaging the bride you're good <laughs> <laughs> you got that um, dylan yes don't upstage the bride everyone go. knows the thing about don't wear white to a wedding you, yeah. you that's not just a rumor that's that's fact you can verify that katie yeah <laughs> that's verify. fact don't do it okay are there <laughs> any other big fashion rules that you would like say or maybe lesser known um we would like other than just dress for the weather, but like uh, any other things you don't do. Right. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say there's things not to do. Um, I mean, the tricky one is if you show up in the same dress as the bridesmaids, <laughs> I've seen this happen, um, but they're not the bride. So it's still okay. It's just kind of more of a laughable moment. Well, that's um, tough to like know ahead of time, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I would say, but ha like you would not know that. So I would like the white dress is the key thing, but I think making sure that you're not coming in like a full glitter gown or <laughs> like wearing a full, like, I, I don't know, even for guys like white suits, not a, <laughs> not a good call. Like I know you're not a female, but just don't, don't do it. Um, but yeah, I would say I've seen um, women show up in like a full sparkle dress and that's you look great as a guest but also you're the guest so I think always keeping that in mind that it's not your day it's someone else's day and so you want to look great for it but um, maybe not like full diamond tiara <laughs> sort of deal <laughs> which I don't know if this is a, maybe I'm just going from my own experience here. Yeah. Uh, when we sent out our invitations, our main theme and colors and stuff were like uh, there's a fall wedding, so it was like a a burgundy and like a navy blue were yeah. our colors, and those were the colors that were on our invitations and everything like that. Would you say as a guest maybe stay away from if you're picking up on those signs, stay away from those so you don't end up dressing like yeah. a member of the wedding party i would say yes but at the same time some people have like a 16 color palette for their wedding <laughs> so sometimes it's really unavoidable um like i've seen wedding invitations that go out and then they don't necessarily fully align like some are like white and gold but the wedding is like navy and like turquoise or something like <laughs> it does not line up um and that's sometimes because of decisions made later on in the planning process. But yeah, I usually don't wear anything that is on the invitation, um, those colors. 
And if you're really not sure, go with black <laughs> because um, it's not offensive to wear black. It's probably one of the best things to wear. So, yeah. And the other thing, um, which is more so like I guess this gets into like what do you wear because different weddings will outline line to you what the like wedding style is because you're going to wear something different to like um, – an art museum than you are to a barn wedding than you are to like fine dining in Toronto. So it, it does depend. And usually it's on the invitation or mm-hmm. on the wedding website. Um, and it will have a phrase. So something like, I don't know, like um, they're really strange things like <laughs> dressy casual or like <laughs> things like that. And you're like, what does that mean? Just write it in Google. It will give you, like plans of like what outfits to wear. I've definitely wondered that before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes I think people make up the phrases. <laughs> Helpful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dress casual. So they're going to wear shorts in their Motley Crue t-shirt. And right. Like... <laughs> so not that. Um... <laughs> not that casual. You can probably just assume that's not what they meant ever. <laughs> right. But I mean, there are some country weddings where people wear jeans. Um, and so that, sh- like that sort of thing would be outlined, but I would say it's a cardinal rule not to, <laughs> because like, at least go with khakis. Like, it's just, I don't it's know. It's just, it's a fair. classy affair. Just try yeah. to bring up your game a little bit. Yeah. Up your, up your game. Yeah. <laughs> but not too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really fine <laughs> line. No. Yeah, I can honestly say, Dylan, as somebody who received one of your wedding invitations, looking at the color palette on it never crossed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you didn't have a group of podcasters and That's a, exactly professional, right. a wedding professional telling you all these little <laughs> details, Dave. Yeah, that was the issue, 100%. So one challenge on the day of the wedding for a guest, especially if you've never gone to a wedding before, is trying to figure out how early you should arrive. Yeah. What advice would you give on that? Um, I always say half an hour early. And I know that's excessive, but can you think about how many people in this world are late to everything? So if you go for half an hour early, you're probably getting there 15 minutes early. And it is okay to be early for a wedding, but it is not okay to be late for a wedding. So (laughs) if you know you're a person who (laughs) cannot show up to anything on time, you need to account for this. But... Often, if you are getting married at a place um, like a banquet hall or something and there's a group of people coming from a hotel, they often have shuttles that will bring you there. So you don't have to necessarily worry about time. Just get on that and don't be late. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But other than that, once the bride arrives, you have lost your chance. You're not getting in until the whole procession is like done and you can sneak in the back. Um, so I would, I would say half an hour is safe. And then you just sit and chat with people. It's not so bad. Take your selfies. <laughs> if you can't handle um, sitting and chatting with people, like the rest of the night's not going to be your thing yeah. anyways. <laughs> yeah. And it's when you look your best. So we might as well let people see it then. <laughs> yeah. That is so true though. The point you said, uh, if you show up and the bride is walking with her father through those doors, You do not cut through. (laughs) I I think it probably goes without saying, but that's not the right time to sneak. I've seen people try. And I, I mean, that's why you need people who will step in and say no. (laughs) Um, But even the other point is like, even after she's walked down the aisle, if you have people that you were going to sit at the wedding with and they are in row like three you don't get to go sit in row three. You sit at the back. You don't get to sit with those people unless there's a sneaky way of you going like around the outside. Um, but no one should be going down the aisle after the bride has gone down the aisle. So you need to sort yourself out. <laughs> but that's not an option. So it's the price you paid for being late. Yeah. Now back to uh, wedding invitations real quick. Yeah. Um, usually a wedding invitation will say if it is not an open bar. In my experience, if it doesn't say anything, it's probably an open bar. Is that a safe assumption or? Um, yeah, I would say so. 
that's that's usually you write it's like common courtesy from a bride and groom to write that it's not so people come prepared with like cash or whatever <laughs> um so yes i would say that is a fair assumption yeah that, right. that and, that's a that's on the couple okay <laughs> right. so that's on that's on the wedding people if it doesn't say it on the the thing assume it's not a yeah. cash Maybe have a little cash anyways just in case but never hurts yeah it's always good always good to have the cash yeah. just in case. <laughs> so if it is an open bar mm -hmm. is that like permission to just get absolutely wrecked <laughs> i mean Weddings are the most heavily documented event. So <laughs> if you thought going out in university with like cameras was challenging, try having like professional photographers who are everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so like if you're going to be that guy, you will be known as that guy. <laughs> yeah, it, like, it will never be lived down. It, I, I would say it's probably not something that like, you can't get smashed because you, everyone knows you go to a wedding and there's going to be people who are, are yeah. getting a little bit drunk mm -hmm. there, but just know that you're going to be that person forever <laughs> in those people's mind. <laughs> You'll never not be that person. Like, <laughs> so if that's what you want your legacy to be, sure. But <laughs> I don't necessarily, I think on like, if it's an open bar, everyone's going to be at kind of a jolly level and it's a happy occasion and people are doing the classic like YMCA dance and like celebrate good times come on and you've got parents up dancing and grandparents and you know, so like everyone's in like a happy mood and a happy state and like, but I think if you're crossing into territory where you're really embarrassing yourself, like people will try and get you out because... That's not what the event's for. The event is to celebrate. And and it goes back again to making sure that you are not the center of attention. You're not drawing 100%. away from them because you're in the corner puking. Right. And you don't want right. to get to that point ever at a wedding, I think. that you're If you're at that point, good on you for finding a corner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't want the bride's grandma looking after you at the wedding. That's embarrassing. <laughs> so... Get yourself sorted out when you're an adult. I think that's the other thing. You're an adult at the wedding. You're not coming with your parents as a teenager. So keep that in mind. <laughs> and I, I want to ask one more question while we're on the topic of open bars and drinking and, and maybe having cash on you. Should you, is it courteous to still tip the bartender at the wedding? Uh, yes. I would say yes. Like, think about if you were a bartender dealing with with yourself <laughs> <laughs> a full evening of like what, like those people get paid um, a lump sum for their job, but um, it's just common courtesy. It's just it's just the kindness that we have. So I would say yes, um, but I don't think it will be necessarily looked down upon if you don't. But it, I would just say it's in the category of right thing to do. <laughs> And and on that point too, I would also say you don't necessarily, from my perspective, need to every time they bring you out your fifth Ryan Ginger, your right. seventh yes. Ryan Ginger. Yeah. You're not. You don't need to tip every time, but maybe no. the, at the end of the night you could throw a twenty in the little jar. Right. Exactly. There. Give exactly. them a lump sum, but just think like that person is working that night just like they would be at any other place, and so it want we want. I don't know. It's just make it worth it for them. They're dealing with constant people coming up with constant drink orders it's much more frantic than maybe in other environments so and they're yeah. probably under the pressure too if they don't want to mess anything up for this bride and groom <laughs> oh so, yeah so like help them out a little bit they're doing <laughs> their best job yeah so on the topic of messing things up are there any like without naming names like what's some dumb stuff you've seen like rookie mistakes from wedding guests oh man um Oh, let me think. Usually the things I've seen have been family members. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I've had people show up to um, weddings and declare that they are now vegan. <laughs> no. Not you today. You write that not. eight months ago. <laughs> yeah. That's a no. Today you are not. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think showing up. And declaring your dietary needs is 
<laughs> it's just not a, it's not a good look. Um, if you've had a change of dietary stuff, maybe try and mention it earlier or accommodate yourself because those meals are prepped and planned <laughs> before. It's not like showing up to like a diner. <laughs> so I would say that. Um, I have seen people tailgate at weddings. Wait, really? So it's like not. It's just just don't. Yeah. Like cooler so, in the trunk. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Any barbecues? Um, yeah, so I guess like, there is a chunk of time <laughs> between um, ceremony. Like there is often on wedding days, and that's just how it goes. Is there's a chunk of time between, often between wedding um, ceremony and the um, reception. Reception, and so that's usually because there's family photos being taken and the couple's photos, and there's time for you to travel from place to place. And I mean, honestly, take the time as a breather, <laughs> as a guest. But. Um, yeah, I was at a wedding. I was actually a guest, but the there was a big concern that there wasn't going to be enough alcohol at the next portion, which I don't know where these fears came from, but there were <laughs> mass amounts of cars in the backfield who had gone to LCBO and gotten coolers and filled them with ice and were tailgate partying in the back and then came into the wedding reception like that. So, um, <laughs> no. No, no, don't do that. (laughs) So um, I'm sure they had fun, but I mean, it was the talk of the night. So, so on that, on that note, what about the wedding pre drink in the hotel room? That's a different story. You can kind of do that a little bit more as like, I feel with the tailgate, you're making a scene. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, or what, what, like a pre-drink before the re- like reception or a pre-drink before the wedding? Before the reception. Okay, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> if it's like in the hotel that you're staying in. Kind yeah, of like I think, again, don't get messy and show up as that person who can't walk. Um, but I think you have that amount of time in the middle. Um, I would say most of the time you're probably going to want to eat something because you don't eat something until quite late at weddings. And often guests are really hungry and that's when you start to drink quite a bit. Um, So I would say make sure you've had something substantial um, in that time. But yeah, I think it's okay um, to have a drink with a few friends. You're probably there with people that you are close with. So it's nice to like catch up with people or to see family. Um, But just like not getting out of hand is key. That's the (laughs) key rule. Yeah. I I think the main, a very... uh, broad topic on this podcast so far has been it's not about getting hammered at the wedding that will happen maybe (laughs) there will be alcohol but the point is not to get as drunk as possible right it's not a party like a high school party or something yeah it's like not university clubbing like it's (laughs) it's someone's like day of like celebration more than one person's day um of celebration (laughs) (laughs) nice save um yeah, and like their family and think about like people have flown in and things like that. So I think just always keeping in mind that this is probably the most monu- – like mon- one of the most monumental days in their lives. So not doing anything <laughs> that could jeopardize that in a very like kind and loving way. But Yeah. Back to the hotel bit. If yeah. there is a wedding room block, is it expected – that you book in that wedding room block? Um, I wouldn't say it's expected, but it would probably be your best bet. Um, See, I'm a big travel often... rewards guy. <laughs> <laughs> if you really need to go to a specific place, you do that. <laughs> um, but the benefit of having a block is, one, you're in the same place with all the people that you are there celebrating with so that's great secondly often if there is that there's often transportation so then you don't have to worry about driving and things like that Um, and also those rooms are offered at a discounted price because there's a chunk of them and so it's giving that company so much business Um, so booking in that block it should give you a deal um, and it just makes your life easier but you don't you don't have to I mean people go to weddings and they 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 are coming in from home so it's not offensive to like book at a different place if it's not up to your standard or for sure 
I just want to, that was more for the people, if you're listening, you've never been, when you see that on there, you're like, do I need to do that? But I will say, I've been to both weddings where I have stayed in the hotel block and weddings where I haven't. And the ones where you do mm-hmm. often are really fun because the wedding is likely to end around one o'clock. Yeah. Maybe you're not ready to end around one o'clock yeah. and everyone is going back to the same place and that hotel might have a bar or right. there might be a couple people who open up their room to having people come and hang out and have a few more drinks and, and keep yeah. the party going a little party bit. Keep going after party. Yeah. So that is a benefit. Yeah. I think that it's your best bet, honestly. It's And you're with those people. So I I don't know if you have a really good reason to be somewhere else, go for it. Um, maybe if you're a f- like for like a family with kids, that's probably not the place you want to be. <laughs> but um, but yeah, like party keeps on rolling. So, and I will say, as a married person, the day after my wedding, waking up, going down to breakfast, and seeing all of your friends and family the next morning, it, it's such a great experience just to wake up. And and continue. It feels like the party's still continuing yeah. a little bit, but it's just right. breakfast and it's chill, <laughs> and and everyone's so happy and in a good mood. And maybe you're seeing like you're getting a little bit more time to actually spend with these guests because on the wedding day, and maybe this is another thing we can touch on. You might only get to talk to the bride or groom for five minutes. You yeah. you yeah. might not get a full hour to sit there and talk with them. But the next day they might have a little bit more time on their plate because they're not running around the, oh, the pressure's off and they can sit and chat with you for, right. for a longer period of time. Yeah. And on that note, that's actually a really good thing. Um, there's a point that I think is important for new wedding attendees. Um, so often at weddings um, there is a receiving line. So say right after the wedding, like all the bridal party will line up. Um, and you kind of go through and you shake hands and you give hugs and you say congratulations. Um, and that's your time to say something to them because they most likely will come around to your table later on. But you really don't have tons of face to face time with the bride and groom on their wedding, which I think is shocking to people initially because you're there to celebrate them. <laughs> and so they're there like they're there in your proximity. They're there the whole time but you don't necessarily get to like chat about like i don't know what marvel movie you watched that week (laughs) um and so i think that's good to note so often um in that receiving line you can just say you say hello to everyone even if you don't know them make sure you say hello shake their hand um and then often at the dinner then couples will come to each table and that's when you can just like say hello it's so great to be here um things like that. But one thing that um, it drives me crazy as a wedding coordinator to watch is people feel the need to say goodbye to the couple all night long. (laughs) They will go to the dance floor and be like, oh, Janine, oh, such a beautiful wedding. Have the best honeymoon, blah, 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 which is so well intended. Like the the intent behind it is like so kind. But think about if you had 200 guests pull you away. (laughs) over and over and over and over you never get to dance you often don't get to eat like it's just like they they're trying to enjoy this day that they've spent a lot of money and all their best people are there so I always say take that time at the table to just like say all those pieces that you need to say um and then they're not going to be offended that you didn't go and say goodbye at the end of the wedding like when you choose to leave you can just go and you can send them a message after <laughs> like, another time. Yeah. That brings up another good question, which is, I mean, personally, I've been single for like 90% of my adult life. So I've gotten the invites with the option for a plus one. Some of the ones without an option for a plus one. Sometimes I've been a plus one, which makes <laughs> receiving lines are not a great deal of fun when you're a plus one, by the way. Right. That's that a whole true. other nightmare. Yeah. But, <laughs> What advice would you give to somebody? I don't know if you've been in that situation yourself, Katie, trying to decide whether or not you should bring a plus one if offered. Actually, this is funny and I'm sure he's okay with me saying this, but um, my friend Nick, you guys know Nick. (laughs) Of course. um, I'm his best woman in his wedding. He's always like, oh, but you have a plus one. I'm like, yeah, but who? Like, (laughs) bringing to this. Um, And so I would say, first of all, as wedding party, don't bring a plus one if they're not 
like oh yeah that would be hell for the plus one yeah it's so awful for them you don't have time to be with them um and there's always a joke in wedding speeches about table nine or table 12 or whatever because it's like the random plus ones from the wedding party (laughs) who have to all sit there and like make small talk and it's just it's just like so 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 awkward so don't do that um if you're in the wedding party you're you're in the wedding party that's your goal you're there for your people don't use it as a a, like a reason to get a date just don't um but if you're with someone you could totally bring them but yeah i (laughs) i know um the plus one scenario yes going through the receiving line is awkward just shake hands and smile half the people in the line probably don't know who you were anyway so (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they'll think you that think you're on the other side of the family's cousin just go with it <laughs> i guess it's more so your choice um i actually have a friend who she went which i wouldn't suggest but it worked for her she went to um a wedding as a plus one to her, her friend's brother's wedding and they've been dating now for like four years it was their first date <laughs> Um, which was a lot of pressure because it was a family wedding. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. The one time it works, go with it. But yeah, I would say for me, I don't really use a wedding as like the opportunity to bring a plus one um, because that is a long date (laughs) if you're not sure Um, (laughs) and uncomfortable because it's like you're just the two of you are going to be together all day long navigating a wedding especially if you're not a wedding person, like, you know, not a regular wedding goer. That's a lot to navigate by yourself. Absolutely. Um, So I just think like use your discretion. If you're going with a group of friends from university, there's no need to bring like a random date. Just go with your friends. That's what I was going to say. For me, it always comes down to how many people you're going to know at the wedding. Because if you're going to know a bunch of people there, you don't want somebody who you feel you have to introduce and like you want to catch up with. There might be people you haven't seen in years and that's that's the fun of it really Mm -hmm. yeah you don't want to feel like you're waiting on your your plus one all night and just like are you okay you like this is this person like you don't just non-stop introductions (laughs) i think and also recognizing that like if you're bringing someone as like a like a date to a wedding that is a large cost like a very large cost for both the bride and groom and you because you're now going to give more money Mm mm-hmm um, so I would say that's probably the most expensive date you possibly could go on. So maybe <laughs> use that money and do something else. <laughs> yeah, go for a weekend away somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere. Well, honestly, that's probably what it would add up to. <laughs> it will be more fun for you too. Yeah, hundred so. percent. So then another etiquette question. Actually, that, I mean that's too fancy a word for this. But if you are a single person, you go to a wedding and you don't bring a plus one, mm-hmm. is it? socially acceptable to meet someone at that wedding honestly um a lot of people meet at weddings it's it's just a thing i don't know loves in the air (laughs) it's like group of people that are like-minded because you both care about that couple it's just how it is i mean i think meeting at a wedding and hooking up at a wedding are two different things (laughs) so I would say no to the latter, but um, (laughs) again, you will be remembered as that person. Remember like cousin so-and-so hooked up with that guy? Like it's just, I I don't see anything wrong with meeting someone at a wedding because that is a place and um, you are also there for an extended period of time. So you could chat to someone for like eight hours if you really wanted to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, But yeah, I would say don't go with the intention. (laughs) Um, you're there for the couple. That's actually just good advice for single people in general. Don't just walk around to specific places with the intention of that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but I mean, I've even heard brides be like, oh my gosh, you'll finally meet so-and-so you guys would be so good. Look for so-and-so. So So, like sometimes couples are even like encouraging it because it's like a place where, yeah, I don't know, they can set their friends up, (laughs) but, um, yeah, maybe, but on that note, they're not gonna they're not gonna have that in their mind to set you up on the day of. So don't be expecting that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. And I will I'll put this out there for all the listeners who are planning to go to their first wedding. Um, these are all guidelines. They're not rules. <laughs> Some yeah. rules have exceptions to them and true. feel it out if if the moment's right and it makes sense to break any of these rules. 
Just be aware that these are the guidelines we are setting forth. They are not written in stone, but they are written and they can be erased if you feel the need to. So, yes, I agree. Like Katie said out of the gate too, it's going to be well documented. So whatever you decide to do, just remember that. Yeah, it falls back on you. So choose wisely. <laughs> Perfect. I think I'm good. Dylan, do you have any more questions? No, I was just going to add one last thing to the gifts is yeah. don't omit a card. I think, and it doesn't even have to be that nice of a card necessarily, but the message that you put inside it, people probably will keep their wedding cards. Like I don't keep every birthday card I've ever got. I don't keep like my graduation cards necessarily, but I've got my wedding cards and they're a nice memento to look back on. And and write something nice in there. Like, mm -hmm. don't be like, happy wedding, idiot. Like, just, <laughs> <laughs> you could, yeah. maybe if that's your personality and that's that means a really something. really good point. Yeah. And I think also on the day of, um, this, I'm glad you brought that up, but on the day of, they'll often be like guest books. Do sign those. That That's part of your job as like a wedding <laughs> guest to sign that. Because often um, there's like wedding books and things like people look through those and there's often things where you like sign a wooden heart and it goes on a tapestry and then it, mm -hmm. those people put it up in their house. Like it's really cool for them to see like who was there. Um, so if there are things around um, such as like, I don't know, a photo booth and you stick it in and write your name or whatever, look for those things because those are the things that really mean a lot to the bride and groom, especially as we said that you don't get a lot of face to face time with them. So it's just nice for them to see the group of people that supported them on that day. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. A, a main, main point, I think, again, is that weddings are one of the, the most memorable days that someone's going to have. And just as a wedding guest, just try to make it the best day for them. It's about them. It's not about you. You are there and you are definitely allowed to have fun and you should have fun and and keep it a great time. But just make sure that it's positive memory for the bride and groom that day and don't don't mess it up <laughs> <laughs> don't mess it up yeah. <laughs> <I> like that <laughs> all right well thank you so much for joining us here on the show katie oh, thanks for having me do you have anything you'd like to plug to our listeners if people want wedding tips they can follow me on instagram because sometimes i post them but that's probably the only thing <laughs> Dave probably seen them. All right. What's your <laughs> yeah? No, give okay, a shout wait. out. What, what's your wedding? My Instagram is Instagram? Katie Louise Grace, but it's Katie with a Y. K A T Y L O U I S E G R A C E. You got it. With an at symbol before all of those characters. Yes. And so if you're going to a wedding and you need some support, send me a message. I'll go. I've got you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, yeah, Katie. Thank you for coming on the show. <laughs> no problem. All righty. Well, thank you again to Katie for joining us today and uh, sharing all your insight about not only what it means to uh, be a good wedding guest, but just like how to actually do it and not ruin your friend's wedding. I think that was kind of the main thing. <laughs> Honestly, my main takeaway was that I really hope the next wedding I go to has tailgating. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which I don't think was what she wanted our takeaway to be, but oh well. Nope, but that's us, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> next week's guest is Chef Jeff Richards. Jeff has a wide background of restaurant experiences and has worked it with and helped create some of the best menus in Southern Ontario. Jeff's going to talk to us a bit about his uh, restaurant experience and working in the industry and some of the things he's done and also uh, talk to us about how you can be a better cook at home and some of the things you should make sure you have in your kitchen, some techniques to work on and uh, basic ways to improve the quality of your cooking. Yeah, just liven up those meals a little bit. Make sure that they're not the bland old mac and cheese that you've been eating <laughs> for 20 years or however long. So, uh, yeah, tune in next week for that. And uh, in the meantime, you can find us on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and anywhere else that you look for your podcasts. 
Be sure to give us a follow, like, and give us a rating on iTunes if you liked it. Stay tuned for upcoming episodes, and we'll see you again at the, the Grown Ups Table. table.